Hello everyone and welcome to this new tutorial. In industry, complicated problems are often not solved by hand for two reasons, human error and time constraints. There are many different simulation programs used in industry depending on the field, application and desired simulation products. When used to its full capabilities, Aspen Plus can be a very powerful tool for a chemical engineer in a variety of fields including oil and gas production, refining, chemical processing, environment studies and power generation to name a few. Over the course of these tutorials you will be introduced to some of the basic features of Aspen as we build a simulation of an acetone water extraction distillation process. Because we will build on our existing simulation with each tutorial, it's highly recommended that you save your work every time. We can start with the problem description. We have a mixture containing 50% acetone and 50% in weight of water. This mixture has to be separated into two streams, one enriched in acetone and the other in water. The separation process consists of extraction of the acetone from the water into methyl isobutyl ketone, which dissolves acetone but is nearly immiscible with water. The overall goal of this problem is to separate the field stream into two streams which have greater than 19 percent purity of water and acetone respectively. Now we will begin by learning the basics of running Aspen Plus and building a process flow sheet. This tutorial will introduce you to a number of features that must be understood to complete even a basic simulation. Our goal at the end of this tutorial is to understand some of the features of Aspen while creating a simulation of the mixture of a feed stream of 100 libres per hour of the 50-50 acetone water mix with a solvent stream of 100 libres per hour of methyl isobutyl ketone. To begin a simulation, we have to choose what type of simulation we would like to use. We will use the general with English unit options. You can see here the Aspen process flow sheet window. Some of the features are the toolbar, the select mode button, stream library, status bar, equipment model library and the simulation status. The status bar in the bottom left corner will tell the user what each piece of equipment will do. The simulation status in the bottom right hand corner will notify the user when all of the required data has been input and the simulation can be run. To place a unit operation or piece of equipment into the flow sheet window, select it from the equipment model library and then click on the flow sheet window where you would like the piece of equipment to appear. Do this for each piece of equipment that you would like to add to your simulation. In this tutorial you will only need to add one stream mixer found in Mixer Splitters tab. It should be pointed out that after adding your desired unit operation you must click on the select mode button to reposition or resize the icon. If you do not select this button, you will continue to add the equipment to the process flow sheet. To delete extraneous equipment, click the right button and delete block. To add material stream to the simulation, select the appropriate stream from the stream library. You can choose between material, heat or work streams. First of all, we can resize our object on the flow sheet. It should be pointed out that Aspen has a feature that will indicate to you where streams are required. 
When you select the Material Stream option, a number of arrows will appear on each of the unit operations. Red arrows indicate a required stream and blue arrows indicate an optional stream. For this tutorial, we need to add two streams feeding into the mixer and one product stream leaving the mixer. Some features of Aspen that should be mentioned at this point are the ability to rotate, resize and rename both the streams and the unit operations. To do this, simply select the object that you would like to manipulate and right click on it. For example, here we can rename this stream as feed. We can rename the stream number 2 as methyl isobutyl ketone and the stream number 3 leaving the mixer as product. It's better to rename material streams and the mixer. So we rename the mixer 2, the block, as mixer. In this way, we will better distinguish them rather than the default numbers and letters. At this point, our process flow sheet is complete. Notice that in the bottom right corner, the simulation status has been changed from flow sheet not complete to required input incomplete. We can now click on Next in the toolbar. Now we have to provide the remaining problem specification on input forms. All of the data input for Aspen is entered in the data browser window. Aspen has two features in the data browser window that can both help and hurt the user. The first of these can be seen on the right hand side. Aspen highlights the areas where the input has been complete and has not been completed with the use of either a blue check mark or a half filled red circle. However, you cannot always assume that all of the required input has been entered, especially if you are simulating a more complex problem. This feature will only track the minimal data input required to run a simulation and may cause problems in getting simulations to converge successfully. I recommend going through each icon on the left hand side one by one to make sure that you input all of the desired data for your particular application. Aspen also has a tool in the toolbar that will automatically take the use through the required data input in a stepwise fashion. The button that does this is the blue N with the arrow next. This feature steps through only the minimal data input. Under the Setup tab, in the Specification folder, you can input features such as a simulation title, introduction, and a description of the project that you are working on. These are useful features for tracking your work and for tracking changes that you make to your work over time. Other features that are worth mentioning are the Unit Sets option and the Report. In the Unit Sets tab, a user can input a new base set of units based on what they would like for their specific application. For now, we will stick with the default base set. Under the Report options, the user can change how and what information is provided after a simulation is completed and converged. We can click on Next and we arrive in the Components tab, where the user will input what components will be used in this simulation. Aspen has a huge database of commonly used components and their physical properties. It also has an option where a user can define components that are not included in the database. Under the specifications options, we will input our components in the selection tab. In the box marked component name, enter each of the components one at a time and hit the entry key. So the first one is water. We have acetone. 
The third component, the methyl isobutyl ketone, we want to add it finding this component. So we open the find and we write its formula. We click on find now and we select methyl isobutyl ketone and we click on add select compound. We have now three component in our selection. We can add also an ED for them, water, acetone. The third one is methyl isobutyl ketone. We have rename it. We can now click on next again and we arrive in the property tab. This is probably the most critical input required to run a successful simulation. This key input is the base method found under the specification option. The base method is the thermodynamic basis for all of the simulation calculations. For now, select the ideal method. In future applications, you may wish to use a process type that is specific to your particular project. However, for now, we will stick with default all, and this will complete our inputs under the Properties tab. We click on Next. Under the Streams tab, we will enter in all of the specification for each of the feed streams, one at a time. As we can see here in the left, we have now to input information for the stream's feed. For this simulation, we will use a temperature of 75 Fahrenheit degrees and a pressure of 50 PCA. We have a mass flow that is 100 libors per hour. We have now to set the composition. We know the mass fraction that is 50% in water and 50% in acetone. The sum must be 1. We have complete the information for the stream feed. We can now click on next and provide the information for the other stream that is the one with the solvent of methyl isobutyl ketone. The temperature and the pressure are the same. The total flow 2 is 100, we have a mass flow of libres per hour and in this case we can set a mass fraction of 1 for the methyl isobutyl ketone. The final area that requires input is the blocks tab. This is the tab corresponding to the mixer. Under this unit operation we have the option of forcing the feed streams to mix at a desired pressure or with valid phases. In our mixer, we are not changing the temperature or pressure, so we'll specify that liquids are the only valid phase because both of the feed streams are liquid at this condition. And we click on liquid only. After this is input, you will notice that the simulation status changes to required input complete. So, now we are ready to run the simulation. There are a few ways to do it. The user could select either the next button in the toolbar, which will tell you that all of the required inputs are completed and ask if you would like to run the simulation. The user can also run the simulation by selecting the run button in the toolbar. We click on next and run the simulation. After the simulation is run and converged, you will notice that the Result Summary tab on the Data Browser window has a blue checked mark. Clicking on that tab will open up the run status. If your simulation has converged, it should state calculation were completed normally. If you have received this message, you have successfully completed your first tutorial. In the next tutorial, we will talk about the convergence and presentation of results. Don't miss it and remember to subscribe to the channel. For further information, you can send an email or leave a message on YouTube. See you in the next tutorial. Bye!